Welcome back everyone to 8.1 arc length. In this video we have one more definition and three more examples. So let's get to it. All right, this first definition applies to smooth curves. So suppose we have C being a smooth curve and we have uh, it given by an equation y equals f of x where x ranges between a and b. Now s of x is going to be this distance along the curve C from the initial point which we're calling p naught to a point Q, which ends at the value of X. Then S is a function called the arc length function. All right, so it's not just not arc length, but it's arc length function. And we're defining this by S of X as the integral from A to X, where X is a variable, then everything else is the same. So it's the square root of one plus the derivative quantity squared. Now notice we're using T's instead of X's, just so that we don't double use a variable name here. And then dt. Okay, so let's try to use this then to figure out the arc length function. And now notice that this is a problem that we've already solved, uh, but we're now we're starting at an initial point of x equals 1 and we're finding the arc length function. So first of all, let me write down f of t, right? Because we're going to want to integrate with respect to t here. So f of t is going to look a lot like f of x, but just swap in some t's instead of x's. Then it turns out that we can pretty much copy and paste our exact work from the arc length up above. So I'm going to just copy this here, uh, not all of it, but most of it here. And I'll show you what we can keep and what we can discard. OK, so the first change we might want to make is instead of x's, we're going to have t's. So I'm going to just go ahead and write over these with t's everywhere I see my x's. But as you can see, a lot of the work stays valid. Okay, now the next thing that I'm going to do is we're not integrating from 1 to 4 anymore, but we're actually going to be integrating from 1 to x, where x is a variable. So 1 to x, so everywhere I see 4, I'm going to write x. And you can see the work stays pretty much the exact same up until the point where we actually need to plug in these limits of integration. So now when I plug in a limit of integration, well, if I plug in x everywhere I see a t, I'm going to have x cubed over 12 minus 1 over x. And now if I plug in 1 everywhere I see a t, well, that'll give me 1 12th uh, minus 1 over 1, aka just 1. And we can simplify this down a little bit more. So this is going to be, well, x cubed over 12 minus 1 over x. And then let's see, 1 12th minus 1. So that's going to be negative 11 twelfths. But then I have a second negative sign, so that's going to be plus 11 twelfths. So now we can see, uh, you know, with this initial starting point of x equals 1, if you tell me where to stop, you know, stop at 2, stop at 3, stop at 4, wherever, I can go ahead and just plug in. Uh, different x values for wherever you want me to stop, and I can quickly tell you the arc length uh, of lots of different lengths, right? Wherever you want to stop, I can tell you how long the curve's going to be. So this is the advantage of an arc length function. All right, let's do another one here, just a few more examples to wrap it up. We have the arc length of this function, the natural log of the cosine of x on the interval from 0 to pi over 3. So this one is just arc length, not an arc length function. So we use our arc length formula here, which means, of course, that we're going to need to know what is the derivative. So that's usually the first step for arc length. So calculate out the derivative. Well, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over the function. And then chain rule says I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, aka negative sign. So I'm going to need to square this. So let's see, sine over cosine, well, that's going to be tangent, right? So this is negative tangent, but when I square a negative, it becomes positive. So this is the same thing as positive tangent squared. OK, now I remember, I think I can trade this in for something, right? Uh, so in order to recall this, let's use the Pythagorean theorem really quick. That says that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, or if you'd like to, that you can say this is the definition of sine and cosine to some extent. Um, okay, so if I divide through by cosine squared, then I get tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. So, aha, there we go. This is equivalent to secant squared. 
OK. Now, technically, this is the absolute value of secant, right? Because that's how squares and then square roots work. But when I range between 0 to pi over 3, it's always going to be positive. So therefore, it's the same thing as secant of x dx. Now, I know how to integrate secant, right? This is a formula that we should remember. It's the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x plus c when we're using indefinite integrals. But in this case, we're evaluating from 0 to pi over 3. So, oh man, here's the hard part, trig, right? So plugging in pi over 3 into secant. Well, let's see, pi over 3 into cosine would normally be 1 half. So this needs to be 1 over 1 half. And how about tangent? Plugging in pi over 3 into tangent, well, sine is going to be root 3 over 2. Cosine is going to be 1 half. So sine over cosine, there we are. And then how about plugging in 0? Well, plugging in 0 into secant, that's going to be 1 over 1. And then tangent, well, plugging in 0 into tangent, that's going to be 0. So, okay, a little bit of simplification here. Let's see, instead of multi sorry, instead of dividing by a fraction, I can multiply by its reciprocal. Play that a couple times. And then minus the natural log of 1. Well, the natural log of 1 is just 0, so that's nice. So this is going to be the natural log of 2 plus root 3. Notice I don't need the absolute values anymore because 2 plus root 3 is already positive. So there is my final answer. That is the length of this curve from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, and how about an arc length function? In this case, it would probably be too difficult for us to integrate, uh, unless we had a lot of time, maybe, or some computer software. But at least let's set up an integral. So s of x is given to be the integral from 1 to x of, and now we already have t's, so that's nice. Uh, so the formula is 1 plus the derivative squared, all under that square root, dt. And so let's calculate out the derivative. Well, we know how to take the derivative of tangent inverse. It's just 1 over 1 plus t squared. So let's go ahead and plug that into our formula here. Integral from 1 to x of square root of 1 plus 1 over t squared. Square that all under that square root dt. And that's going to be my final answer. All right, and that is the end of 8.1 arc length. Go ahead, take a nice long break, do your homework, and then next time we're going to be starting Chapter 11. I'll see you in a little while.